uh, by what's going on with the economy. They're upset by trade. They're upset by virtually everything. Nothing good happens with us. We don't win anymore. Nothing good happens. So there is a very angry group of people out there. And they're not angry people, but they're angry at what's happening to our country. Yes, go ahead. Stay with me. We're going to get you jobs. Because the biggest problem I have, I go and meet college students. They get out. They work hard. They put debt up to their neck. And then they can't get a job when they graduate. Because the jobs we have are all bad jobs. We're not, we're not creating good jobs. The good jobs are going away. They're going off the country. They're going out of our country. Pfizer is leaving and moving to Ireland. It's disgraceful. We're going to get them jobs. Yes, go ahead. How did you know I was talking about Mr. Trump? Well, by the way, I mean, listen, I think you watch the, the act Senator Rubio has been putting on over the last few weeks. He's obviously gone now, and part of his talking points are to try to be entertaining and smile a lot. Um, you know, listen, it's one act after another. Um, we don't need any more of these Washington, D.C. acts. The acts I wanted to get rid of are Washington, D.C. acts. That's why, as a governor from a state capital, I said, we don't need somebody from Washington, D.C. What I most consistently said during that campaign was, the problem is Washington, D.C., and we don't need Washington politicians to come in and fix it. And so when you look at who's remaining on that stage, there is no question that this is the person who will go to Washington, D.C. and be able to absolutely turn the place around. We don't need any more Washington politicians, especially some who've only been there for one term and never really shown up for work um, to tell us how to run the United States government. And so uh, I absolutely believe um, that Donald Trump is the best person on that stage to be president of the United States. And one last thing, by the way, there was a period of time I was running against him. And he knew when I I was running against him. I wanted to beat him. And he wanted to beat me. And we had open conversations about that. But that part of this is over. And then you have to say to yourself, as a good, loyal American, who is the best person to stop Hillary Clinton from ever getting inside the White House again? This is the best person to do that. Turn away from the amateur acts from Washington, D.C. and turn to a professional, strong leader. That's who this man is. Yes. No, this, what my uh, intent for being here today is to say to anyone who's willing to listen, not just members of the RGA or donors, but to the American people, that you need a strong, tough leader to restore America's greatness. And this is the best person to do that. And so whatever message anybody else wants to take from that, they can take whatever message they like. But most of the time, you know that people do best with me. If they don't try to figure out what the message is, they just listen. They listen to what I say because I don't send smoke signals. I, what I'm doing today is I'm endorsing the person I believe is the best person to defeat Hillary Clinton and restore American jobs, restore American prestige around the world, and restore the faith and confidence of the American people again in the fact that we are an exceptional and great nation. To Mitt Romney to, 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 to Donald Trump, they're very different fellas. Well, I think we have a great shot. I think that uh, people are liking me a lot. I know a lot about Texas. I have many friends in Texas, many, many friends. I'm here a lot. Uh, I think we have a really good chance. If you look at uh, South Carolina, that was supposed to be Cruz's stronghold. That was a stronghold. He was going to win that easily. And I won by, is it 22 points? You know, I won in a landslide. I won evangelicals. I won military. I won the vets. I won everything. I won men. I won women. I won Hispanics. I won every single category. And uh, same thing in Nevada. We, uh, we came in, we won every category, including, by the way, Hispanics. So, uh, you know, it was supposed to be a stronghold. He was supposed to do great there. He lost by a lot. I think that I should have a really good chance of Texas. I see uh, the Bloomberg poll came out, and it's, uh, you know, massive leads in every state. Uh, we're doing very well in Texas. The Emerson poll came out. We're, I guess, tied or effectively tied. So I think we're going to do very well here. I'm going to be here. I'm here now. And uh, I would love to get Texas because of my relationship to Texas. So many friends. Okay. Mark.
Well, he's desperate. Look, look. I watched a part of his little act, and he's a desperate guy. I've been watching him uh, over the last number of weeks. He is not presidential material, that I can tell you. Doesn't have the demeanor. Uh, he is a nervous Nelly. I watch him, you know, backstage. He's, he's a mess. The guy's a total mess. And, you know, I joked recently about, can you imagine Putin sitting there waiting for a meeting, and Rubio walks in, and he's totally drenched. I don't know what it is, but I've never seen a human being sweat like this man sweats. So I don't think he's a presidential, I don't think he's of presidential caliber. Uh, I don't think he has the demeanor. Uh, I don't think he's going to do very well. And he's a, he's a mess, because in Florida, which he abandoned, by the way, I love Florida. I've invested hundreds of millions of dollars. I own Doral. I own many clubs, including Mar-a-Lago, including Trump International, which is one of the best clubs in the country. But I own many. And a lot of real estate along the shore of Miami that worked out well with the Deserts and a lot of other people. Uh, so I, I have a, I'm a major investor in Miami, one of the biggest. And frankly, the people in Florida like me. But for me to go into Florida and have like a 20-point lead over the sitting senator... But remember, the sitting senator abandoned Florida. He left Florida. He was supposed to be there. He really defrauded, if you think of it. He really defrauded Florida, the people of Florida, because they elected him as a young senator. He goes there, and before he sits down, he starts running for president. So he's not the right guy, in my opinion. And I think he's got very bad temperament. I think he's got the absolute wrong temperament to be president. Katie, go ahead. No, no. They did speculate that he was going to be my vice presidential pick. Uh, I, honestly, I'll be honest with you. Now it's obvious that he's not going to be. I never even had it in mind. I don't think he has the right temperament. I've watched, I watched Chris do a number on him. I've almost never seen a meltdown like that in my life. And, you know, it's interesting about people who choke. I'm, believe it or not, a good athlete. I've watched people choke over the years. And once a choker, always a choker. It never ever changes. The guy that misses the kick, misses the kick. When he misses the first one, you got to get rid of him because it doesn't work. Once a choker, always a choker. And that was one of the epic meltdowns. He didn't know where he was. I thought he was going to, I thought he was going to die. Good going, Chris. Man. <laughs> well, I don't want to discuss that, but he certainly got the talent. I, you know, it's, we didn't talk about it. We actually did not even talk about it, but he certainly has a lot of talent. Yes, Katie? I don't want to do it until I have it done. And let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something. We talk about establishment and all. I think it's very unfair that for many, many years I've been audited. I have many, many friends that are very rich people, and they, never, they have never been audited. I was with somebody the other day, very rich guy. I said, how often are you audited? He said, audited. He didn't, even, he didn't know what I was talking about. I have many, many rich friends, almost all of them, and they're never audited. Why am I audited every single year? So I'm just going to put you people to rest. Until my audit is finished, very simple, you're not going to see anything. When it's finished, you're going to see it. But I'm not going to complicate things by doing it. But put yourself in my position. Why is it that every single year, and I'm talking about beyond Barack Obama, but every year during his term also. Every single year I'm audited. It's not fair, I will tell you. I can't, I can't tell you why. I mean, I can't tell you why. I can't tell you why. All I can say is that many, many people I know that are very, very wealthy are not audited. Okay. John? Yeah. Yeah, which is yeah, which is totally wrong, totally wrong. He also said I got two hundred million dollars from my father. I wish, I wish, um, I got a very, very small loan from my father many years ago. I built that into a massive empire, and I paid my father back that loan. And by the way, and I was telling Chris, actually, Chris was telling me because he understands it. Uh, my father left me some money, not nothing like the numbers you heard, but by that time, it was many, many years later when my father passed away. My father, more than anything else, I learned a lot from my father. But for this guy, this uh, lightweight, I call him a lightweight because he is a lightweight, to get up and say 200 million, in fact, 
The first call I got last night was from my sister. And then I got a call from my brother. And they said, wow, how does he say that? That's not true. They understand. You know, we have five in the family. And they said, so in other words, anything also would be split up. But she called. She said, boy, was that untrue. And it's really a shame. And I'll tell you where they got it. They got it. The New York Times wrote, you know, the, I call it the failing New York Times because it is a totally failing paper with some really inaccurate reporting and purposely inaccurate. They go out of their way. And if you try and make a correction prior to the story, they don't want to do it. Uh, they made a statement about it. I don't, I don't know where they got it. But I would just tell you the number is wrong by a factor of hundreds of, I mean, by a fortune. I got a small loan, started a business, and it's now worth billions and billions and billions of dollars. And if I ever wanted to sell the assets I have, Trump Tower, uh, the Bank of America building in San Francisco, big chunk, 1290 Avenue of the Americas, some of the best land in the country, Doral Country Club, Turnberry in Scotland, home of the Open Championship, referred to sometimes as the British Open. Uh, my, the, my property would sell for numbers like nobody would even believe. I have, the, I, have I think, among the best properties anywhere in the world. No, I just think it's really unfair when a guy says, my father gave me $200 million. If you knew Brooklyn, okay, in the 19, early 1980s, and you understand this, Chris, if you knew Brooklyn in the early 1980s and the 1970s, there wasn't $200 million that I can tell you. And I do have brothers and sisters. But the first call I got was from my sister. And then I got a call from my brother late at night. And all he wanted to do is say, why, why are they allowed to say that? Because he's a liar. This guy's a liar. Now, I used to call Ted Cruz a liar. But now I'll also call Marco Rubio. And he actually mentioned some companies. And some of those companies are very successful companies. He said they closed. I sold some. I sold, like, for instance, I sold Miss Universe for a lot of money. Got a lot of money for it. I sold others. And the water company he mentions. He mentions, I think, the wine company. I have the biggest vineyard on the East Coast. The X. The X. Uh, that's having to do with... I, I make vodka... All for my clubs, because I have many clubs. And we make vodka for the clubs. He said it was closed. It's not closed. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, I think about it. I would certainly think about it. But look, if for some reason it didn't work out for me, Chris would understand this. I'm going back into what I do. I don't need to do this. This is something I'm doing because... We are going to make America great again. And politicians are not going to do that. These politicians, and I know the people on the stage, they're not going to do it. Marco Rubio is a lightweight. He doesn't have the talent. He doesn't have the temperament. He can never make us great. One more, sir. One more. So you know, do you know you can write off the money that you are using for your campaign? Do you know if you can write that off? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I can't. What, what kind of a question is that? No, I can't. I am the governor of the state of New Jersey until January 19th of 2018, and I have every expectation that I will fulfill the end of my term and then go into private life and make money like Trump. That's what I intend to do. <laughs> I haven't been offered any position, um, and uh, I don't speculate on those kind of things. I have a term of office till January 19th of 2018, and um, I intend to fulfill my term. Um, and then, like I said, go off into the private sector and finally beat my wife one year um, in, in our marriage. Uh, we've been married 30 years in March. I'd like one time before I die to make more money in a year than she did. So that's going to be my goal after January 19th of but 2018. But have talent. That I will. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We have thousands, I, I have to go. We have thousands and thousands of people outside. You will be very impressed. Thank you all. Thank you very much, everybody.